You are listening to a Core Confidence Life production. www.coreconfidencelife.com If you're an expert in your field and you're looking to spread your message by starting your own podcast, well, turn to Core Confidence Life. We are a talent development, promotion, and coaching service that will walk with you every step of the way and help you prepare, polish, and launch your podcast. We'll even be your producer as well. So if you're ready to speak into the mic, hey, speak to us first at Core Confidence Life. Go to coreconfidencelife.com and look under speaking and podcasts. Core Confidence Life. Contact us so we can help you master your podcast game and take the field. Grr, growl, hiss. All right, how masculine are you? You manly, manly, man you. All right, welcome to the Core Confidence Life. I am your host, Dennis, coming from New York City. And actually, I'm very excited about bringing this topic to you here today. It's the topic on energy, human energy, masculine energy, feminine energy, and building that healthy relationship with yourself. We've got all that coming up on the program with a holistic coach and author. And uh, I'm excited to bring this to you. Um, And we're going to get deep into the nature of manhood. And yes, folks, in a topic like this, we do touch on toxic masculinity. I'll say more about that in a moment. So welcome to the program. Fasten your seatbelt. It's going to be a masculine ride. Yip, 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 yahoo! Welcome to the Core Confidence Life. Yes, indeed. All right, I am your host, Dennis R. Sumlin, broadcasting to you from high atop Womanhattan. Here, you are listening to a men's development podcast, and our aim is to help you master your inner game so you can take the field. We aim to give you a home court advantage when it comes to developing authentic, healthy relationships with others and yourself. So welcome to the program. Tell all your friends this program is for men and those who love men. All right. And on today's program, we are talking about one of the foundations of what this program is really based on. One of the foundations, you know, I said just a second ago, building healthy relationships with yourself and others and yourself is what we're talking about today. The nature of human energy, you know, as humans, we all have energy. We are all admitting energy, just like if you put your hand near a flame, you don't have to touch that flame to feel the heat to feel the energy being emitted from it. The same thing with an ice cube. If you put your hand over an ice cube, you don't have to touch it to feel the cold uh, moving from it. The same thing happens when it comes to humans. We all have energy emitting from us. And that energy is at different frequencies for different individuals. Right. So today we have a guest coming up in a few minutes on the program that's going to be discussing uh, human energy. More specifically, discussing masculine and feminine energy. And it's important to remember here that uh, there is no black or white when it, comes to, when it comes to energy. There is no black or white. You know, there, there is not a one masculine and one feminine energy with nothing in the middle. Energy is a continuum. All right. We all have different degrees of masculinity and femininity, just like we have different degrees of every other uh, human characteristic trait or energy frequency. We, as men, have a certain amount of feminine energy in us. Women have a certain amount of masculine energy in them, just like We as men have a certain level of estrogen in us, even though testosterone is known to be the male hormone and vice versa for women. So as we move into our interview today, just remember that we are whole beings. We are not parts. We contain all the potential of humans. Uh, 
and we contain varying frequencies of human energy, just like we both have estrogen and testosterone in different amounts, we all have variations of masculine and feminine energy, which makes us whole as a human. Now, the trick is to defeat stigma, right? Regardless on what nature has to say, leave it to society and stigma to come in and fuck it up for everybody. Making men uh, feel like they have to go to the extremes to be considered a man. Making women feel like they have to go to the extremes of passivity to feel like a woman. And the only way we're going to achieve balance, the only way that men and women are going to be able to balance relationships with themselves and within themselves is is if we release stigma, learn how to see each other as humans and understand the masculine and feminine dynamic. Amanda Dabra Hope is a holistic coach, author and speaker. She is on the program today to talk about gaining a better understanding of the masculine energy, what is called the divine masculine. We talk about the masculine energy as it relates to the culture today, how men and women can work together to bring more balance to the masculine energy today, what gays, lesbians, and bisexuals have to teach us about energy, and of course, we touch on toxic masculinity. She also talks about her book, Holding Space, a guide to supporting others while taking care of yourself first. We are talking to a holistic coach and author, and she's going to talk to us all about spirituality, manifestation, the divine masculine and feminine, all stuff I love. How you doing? I'm great. I, I love that intro. It's great. I'm so ready to jump into this now with that intro. Oh, well, <laughs> I'm glad I can get you revved up by my I'm revved up. <laughs> Absolutely. So you are a holistic coach. Let's dive right in. What is that? What is that? So holistic means mind, body, spirit. It means looking at your whole life as a whole rather than in pieces. So often when people come to me for coaching, they might say, I have this presenting issue or this thing that I'm having trouble with and maybe say it's um, their career. And, you know, we'll go through and I'll just sort of really be open and guided as I'm holding that space for them and, you know, intuiting into some things and just feeling out what should I ask them? How should I guide this session? And sometimes I'll say, you know, do you have a dog? And they'll kind of say, what, what does that have to do with anything? And I said, well, just give me 10 minutes. I'll show you how to connect. So basically holistic life coaching is, is everything connects. Everything is, is interacting with everything else in your life. And, and no part of your life is really fragmented um, and, you know, isolated from anything else. So. Mm. All right. Excellent. Excellent. So are, are your are your clients primarily men, women? What's the age group, you know, or, or what's going on there? Um, it's been primarily women. And I feel like as we discuss the divine masculine and feminine, we'll get into why that is and how you and I are here to change that and bring more men on board. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Um, but it has been primarily women. Um, it's going to be people who it, it depends, of course, on the person and their level of voracious hunger for their uh, awakening to that which is bigger than what it may look like appears on the outside in the physical world. Um, so that age can vary, but it tends to be probably 35 to 65, I guess I would say. Oh, okay. Okay. So what would you say would be the most common challenges that your clients have when they first find you? They're stuck. In some area or another of their lives, they're stuck. Which, which areas? Like, what, what are the top areas you hear about when it comes around stuckness? Um, I mean, it's so hard to say because whatever is the presenting issue, and this is, again, what I teach and what I get at with people, there's always a core wound or a core trauma or a core belief system that happened way back long time ago, you know, lifetimes ago, who knows, but but somewhere way underneath whatever that presenting issue is. So the presenting issue, it could be in career, it could be in relationships, it could be, 
you know, money. And that core issue is going to be something like self-worth or being rejected or, you know, whatever. So it, it's whatever the core thing is could be something that could affect all different parts of life. So, so I don't know that there is a, a thing that they come to me with most often um, because they all sort of stem from that, those core relationships with, yourself which with what's bigger than you with your feeling of your place in the world and you know how you belong in it um so i guess the the core thing would be uh that authenticity that relationship with yourself with what's bigger than you with the people in the world around you um and and just your feeling of how you you fit in that and how you show up in that is that a good answer i mean i know it is but <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a good answer, all right? I do want to say that I know that you you, you said at this time your mo most of your clients are women and they are coming to you for you know the things that we hear a lot about relationships, rejection, maybe some insecurities, lack of confidence, maybe image issues, or things like that. Um, and of Career, course, money. I've got people who come to me. I had one guy who came to me and he just lost his moxie. He just said, "I just don't know." where my passion is. I don't, I just sort of get up and go to work and at a job I don't really want to be at. And there's just, I don't, there's no spark. There's no, I don't know what my thing is. And so mm -hmm. we took him through this whole process to find his moxie basically. And by the end of it, he was creating all these amazing things that he didn't even think that he was interested in creating. So well, I, I think that, that, that that's, that's excellent. And I was also, you know, also going to say that a lot of these issues that maybe women face, men also face, they're just not as talked about. And so or they're, they're just not as willing to seek the exactly. support. Exactly. So I'm glad you brought the man that, that was looking for his moxie, his, 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 his mission, his spark, and you were able to help him find that. Yeah. Um, so what happens, because it's all about working from the inside out. Also, it's all about getting connected with yourself from the inside. So when, when, a, when a client comes to you with whatever surface problem there is, um, how do you go about um, starting the process of having them getting con more connected with themselves? Sure. Um, well, this actually relates back to the, the, my newest published book called Holding Space, um, the subtitle of that is a guide to supporting others while remembering to take care of yourself first. And what I cover in that book is what holding space is, which is a divine feminine uh, energy or, you know, uh, thing that's being done there. So there's a whole thing we could get into here with the divine feminine, the divine masculine, and how that doesn't mean if you're male or female. Um, we will. That's my next stop. Yeah. We will. All other energies <laughs> that are in all of us and in everything. But, um, I lost the question. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I, I uh, actually, this is a precursor to getting into the. <laughs> what was what was the rest of the precursor question? Yeah, the I precursor got out of question, and lost it. It was um, how do you uh, begin to help people reconnect? Oh, with themselves? yes. Okay, so so the holding space process. So I'm actually um, out of the book. I've noticed there was a need to start training people in how to masterfully learn to hold space for themselves, for their families, you know, so personally, but also professionally. So the things that I do as a coach, as a, a speaker, as I'm also a wedding officiant. So in all those um, jobs that I do, I'm holding space for people. I am holding that energetic container. So when you say, how do I start to get people to, to bring that out? Well, the first thing I'm doing is I'm setting that energetic container for them when they come to me for us to work on that. And what I like to say is I work on it like clay in the middle of the room. So it's, it's not necessarily touching them. It's not touching me. Um, we're not taking it in and working it really within ourselves. We're creating a space where we're putting all the stuff out in the, not really in the middle of the room, but energetically in the middle of the room and kind of observing it. And so I poke around and I ask questions and I just allow sort of my abilities and my talents of, of knowing how to hold space to ask different questions. And I know um, before we got on this podcast, we were talking about, um, how to how well, with holistic coaching sometimes you know something can look like it's an issue in one area and I might poke around while I'm coaching them and ask them about something completely different in my example it was they said they have an issue with their career and all of a sudden I'll feel like I need to ask them about something else and so I'll say do you have a dog 
And they'll look at me really funny and go, what does that have to do with anything? And I'll say, give me 10 minutes and I'll show you how it relates. Um, <laughs> Where my dog's at. Right? <laughs> so you, you mentioned, and this is what, what, um, what intrigued me uh, about your practice and stuff. You mentioned the idea of the, the uh, divine masculine and the divine feminine. And um, I've mentioned that on this program before, the divine masculine and feminine. But I think this, this is a, a good opportunity to get really deep into what, the, what those things really mean. So yeah. let's do, being that this is, the, this is a men's show, let's look at divine <laughs> masculine first, right? <laughs> Sounds good. So little preview, um, if anyone really wants to get into this topic, that might be what my new book is about that I am currently finishing up. <laughs> so might be. Uh, it may be, it might be, but so the divine masculine and the divine feminine, those are energies. So everybody and everything has those, whether you're male or female. So divine masculine is going to include things like action steps, academia, plans, structure, doing the act of doing things. Um, so those are the, the action energies and the putting things into manifestation energies. Now the divine feminine is going to be things like um, the holding space, which I know we didn't totally get into, but um, relationships, uh, gestating, allowing things to, you know, take their time to gestate and to form. I use the metaphors of um, having, you know, creating a baby, any animal creating a baby, or even baking a loaf of bread. You know, you can't open the oven five minutes into it and, you know, check if it's done yet or it's gonna you know, poof and and, you know, melt down and cave in on itself so you have to allow things to gestate that's a feminine energy um creativity allowing things to uh, come from that creative field um ideas big ideas all that stuff happens in that feminine space and so the feminine energy is one of being it's not one of doing it's one of being and allowing so basically we all have these two energies and everything in the world has these two energies and right now, those energies have been really out of balance for a long time. Um, our world, especially our Western world, has very much uh, honored, exalted, and decided that the masculine energies of action and doing and plans and academia and technology were more important than the feminine energies of allowing and being and, you know, relations and creativity and arts and gestating. Um, and so not only is neither one of them more important than the other, but um, th they need to work together. And then there's another really big clue that I don't want to give away yet because it's a really big part of my next book, <laughs> but um, it just, it's really, really important that they, they get brought together and um, that we start to allow men to realize that they have that part in them and that they are missing a piece if they aren't allowing themselves or each other to access that part. Now, I have a couple questions here because every time I get into this uh, masculine and feminine thing, you got someone who comes along and, and asks the following question, you know, why do we have to label everything? Isn't everything on a continuum? So what's with the labels? And what, what about the continuum of energy? I think the labels in this case are just to help aid in understanding. Because we have to give some sort of... Um, uh, some sort of idea and understanding and, and I guess words to, to help us figure out why it's so unbalanced what we need you know we were talking you and i were talking earlier too about how knowing is half the battle you know when you're facing an issue or something that's not working how you would like it to or it's off balance or if it's it's crumbling knowing what it is you need to do sometimes is is the biggest part of it and sometimes it takes a really long time to even figure that out and then sometimes whatever it is you need to do might take a long time it might not be super easy either but but at least having that knowing of what it is you need to do um, can get you started. Whereas if you don't have that, you're pretty much just floating around lost. So I think the labels in this particular case are not to stifle or separate, but to aid in understanding. Excellent. That's, I, I agree with you that we need labels and uh, to define things. And for me, I think to me, there is a continuum. There is no 
uh, well, either this is all man or all woman. There's a continuum where there's extremes, the polars, but then there's all that space in between um, when it comes to energies within people. Right. Um, so that's the thing. It's not man or woman. It's both of us have the masculine and feminine energies within us, and we have to balance those within us in order to be healthy, happy, whole, and thriving. Absolutely. Um, so, um, you know, when people hear the word masculine and feminine, they start automatically thinking about all these different stereotypes and deeds and sexuality and things like that. So how do you talk to cause, uh, men may, may object to this more than women would when you talk about these energies. So how do you get a man to understand that um, having the divine feminine within him doesn't make him less than a man? And how do you how does he unlock that? <laughs> I, I am covering that in the new book. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's a part where I say, um, you know, a, a really big truth that I'm about to reveal. And I, and I lay it out there. And then I say, for all you men who are about to throw the book across the room, stop for a second. <laughs> you know, hang with me. Um, I'm going to show you why this is actually the key that you need. Um, you know, we can... The men are hurting just as bad as the women. So, you know, there's women's marches and, and women's lib and all these things. And, and people know that the feminine and the females and anything feminine has been repressed for a long time. I mean, everybody knows that. So I was just thinking to myself this morning, you know, the, the females and um, minority groups that have been suppressed, we're, we're not trying to take over the world. We're not trying to like be the new ones in power we're just trying to even the scales <laughs> you know and that's so everybody benefits because the the males who you know maybe are scared um of that happening are are missing a piece too unfortunately and you know if you can go around trying to find it in all other places other than the place you don't want to look because you know, society has said it makes you less of a man to look there, but then at some point you wake up and go, well, wait a minute, that's not even true. That doesn't even make sense. And, you know, I've been told the wrong thing all this time, and that's actually where the answer is. So it's just, it's, it's honestly a society based on control trying to keep that from the men, unfortunately. So it's, it's sad, and um, it's going to take people sort of waking up to, wait a minute, this, this actually isn't true. And, and then deciding that that's where the key is and going in and unlocking the door and freeing themselves and a lot of other men after them. Yeah. Uh, so if it's not giving away, uh, you know, some of your, your secrets, what are some, what are some practical methods that, that a man can use? This be maybe one or two in the, be in the beginning to start to accept that he has some feminine side, regardless, regardless of what the degree may be and how to connect to it. Sure. Um, I'll start with business. So um, we're seeing a, a crash in, in sustainability across our world, right? When, when businesses and corporations start off, if they are operating completely in a masculine mindset of do, do, push ahead, you know, go action steps, technology, and they didn't take any time in the beginning to sit with the feminine of how is this going to affect everything around it? How does this fit into the greater picture? Are we taking care of, you know, ourselves, the planet, the, the employees, is this all going to eventually blow up in our face because we're not taking care to, to think about any of those things. So if, if really easily for, you know, the masculine, if, if a business is run from completely the masculine and that's it, um, eventually it's going to self-destruct because, you know, if, if the business doesn't self-destruct, it's going to self-destruct the the people in it, um, you know, the planet around it. And, you know, if we can't have those, um, the, the sort of soul part of life, the spirit part of life, the, the beauty, the food, you know, any of that stuff where it doesn't matter how much technology we have or how much money we have, you know, it's that, it's that Indian prophecy of, you know, only when we realize that, you know, when the last river is poisoned and, and the last mountain is, is defaced or whatever, what will we realize that we can't eat money? Well, you could if you put a little oregano and ketchup. You know. <laughs> well, I mean, if you're sitting in a barren world and you're the last person left and you're putting some oregano on, if there's oregano left. Um, well, yeah, because it's sure. the last person, who's, who's there to make the oregano? 
Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, so understanding the, the importance of both uh, sides or both energies is one thing, but you know, um, how do I develop that as a man? Like I, I, I need, I need some more feminine energy. <laughs> how do I, man, how do I, how do I grab well, first the, of all, the, the man who thinks that has to get over, like I said, the lie that feminine energy means it's going to make you more female or more femme because it doesn't at all, not mm-hmm. even one bit. And what I can say to the guys is, Women have joined the workforce. Uh, Women have, you know, uh, fostered careers and things like that, learned math and science, and and that's the masculine side of women, right? And that didn't harm us or or make us men. Um, In some ways it did at some point because some women maybe took it a little bit too far and took on too much masculine that they lost their feminine and we're showing up um, kind of like men. So it's a balance, um, but it needs to be brought back into balance and it needs to be explored and and we need to go get that other part of ourselves. So um, it's, it's a matter of just changing that mindset in whatever man is listening's own self of wait, I was told a lie um, and dismantling that. And then once one man can do it, then the guy next to him has permission to do it. And the guy next to him, women were given permission. We were allowed, um, you know, it, it, blew open and and we were able to join the workforce and um you know girl power and all that stuff and men still have not been allowed so i think the men need to start allowing themselves and then allowing each other to go find that part yeah yeah so okay let's say you you, you, you're coaching me and yes i i accept that you know this everything is a lie and i'm allowed to be a whole person but i just because i'm a man and i don't really understand some of this stuff because I've been under the same male culture. We all have been under. So mm-hmm. now that I've accepted that feminine is just energy, has nothing to do with my manhood, my sexuality, nothing like that. So I'm mm-hmm. ready. I'm not practiced at doing this, but I'm ready. So yep. what does a man do? Does he meditate? Does he go out and uh, pick daisies? Like, does he? <laughs> still, like, I-, I don't think picking daisies is going to work. And, and what I, uh, you know, recommend for people i'm glad you asked that because it's easier than people think it's there are a lot of people out there coaches and and teachers or whatever who might tell somebody well you just have to jump over to this complete other side than where you are i don't do that what i try and do is meet people where they're at and give them the next step that they can actually touch you know not something where you're over here you understand you need to get over there jump over that chasm You, you can't do that So picking daisies, you know, is is absolutely not going to work for that person. So what I would suggest is whatever, you know, I'm not here to say do meditation, do this, do that. I I can give um, options and and ideas, but it's going to be, there are a lot of things like that out there, art, you know, music, um, any of that's going to get a a guy closer to his, um, that feminine energy inside him, just being still. Um, playing with your kids if you have them, um, just really observing what it's like to, to be a child, going out in nature, whatever is something that is that next step that a guy says, I could do that. I wouldn't feel weird about doing that. You know, it's going to be one step at a time. So whatever feels like it's not too scary or it's not too outside their comfort zone, start with that. Hmm. All right. Start with that. So, um, you have women clients who need to get more in touch with their masculine side, I'm guessing as well. I have women clients who need to get more in touch with their feminine side. Tell me about that. How, how does yeah. that work? Well, like I said, it's an, it's the feminine energy. And what happened is in order to fit in, in a masculine, overly masculine dominated world, not overly male do- dominated world, overly masculine energy dominated world, the women to try to fit in and keep up and not, you know, drown in it have sort of, you know, left their feminine behind the same way as the culture did and become too masculine. So uh, women are actually have gone first in this whole uncovering of, of what we've lost and put away here. And, and the reason for that is just because they're closer to it because they're women, they, they can grab that easier and the culture's made it, you know, not, not acceptable for them to do that. So, um, you know, another thing I would say to the guys out there is if, if you're the women around you, you know, your wives, your girlfriends, your mothers, your daughters are, um, your friends are going through trying to uncover their own feminine and it's, 
it's poking at you and you think that it's it's emasculating you or they're becoming these strong women and it's making you feel inferior or whatever bless them honor them and support them because it's gonna it's the key that you're gonna need to and they're just able to find it right now and they're doing some really hard work on themselves and they're not trying to take you over or emasculate you or erase you they're they're actually trying to do the work for everybody right now um because it's so far away for the men because the culture still does not encourage it so i know that's really powerful and i might get tomatoes thrown at me but <laughs> at some point people are going to realize that that's true and i'm not saying that means women are better than you i'm saying that women lost their own fem you know feminine uh divine feminine and because we're not um told we can't find that or told that we'll be too manly or whatever you know what i mean if we go find that we're allowed to and and so we have to kind of just by default at this point until the men can uh get rid of that conditioning which is no fault of their own i mean that's some hard harsh conditioning that has been brought on the men that is very very hard to um slough off the same as for the women it's hard to slough off the condition of of be seen and not heard you know i find that in my own business i want to you know help and heal and and a lot of times it's i'm putting my toe out and then and then running backwards because it's like well who's gonna throw something at me you know <laughs> so Absolutely. You know, and I, I was thinking while you were talking too about that, you know, I'm sure all, all the men know that, you know, sometimes you'll hear men make complaints about, you know, modern women. What, what happened to women? They're not feminine anymore. They, they're, they're, they're tougher than rougher and, and more disgusting than men now. So right. I, think, I think there are men that see that there's been some sort of a shift in, in female culture. It's true. Um, but they don't really put the same on themselves where, okay, well, you may want the woman to be a little bit more feminine and not so much, so much masculine, but you didn't embrace your feminine yet either. So true. it's, yeah, it, it's kind We're of all like, hurting. We are all hurting, which is why, you know, I don't necessarily jump in on, on anybody saying, well, you know, uh, really focusing on, on, <sighs> the hurt or whatever of a specific group because everybody's hurting so i i don't want it to be like well just the women have been wronged and have to you know get healed and have all this all, you know everything brought back up in their psyche to feel better but everybody's hurting that, uh, yeah, absolutely everybody is hurting everyone has been lied to men yeah. are still the the victims of all this conditioning the way women are it's just that men don't see it that way because the society is still being controlling and you know um yeah. that's why we've all been lied to <laughs> so i, I want to get into a little bit i have a lot of questions of course but i i <laughs> want to first uh, strike this thing at the uh, at the head of that it's screaming out so okay what do you think about um to toxic masculinity you had to know this was coming Oh, it's perfect because that's, it was coming up for me too, actually. And what I was just answering some of your questions and uh, what kept screaming to me is what we need to bring back is, is healthy masculinity. And I think it was when you asked me, what can men do? Can you go out and pick daisies? Can you do whatever? And what it is and what needs to be brought back up is healthy masculinity. Our culture has toxic masculinity. It's take, and not, that doesn't mean toxic men. I mean, it can be if they have toxic mas masculinity, but the culture itself overall in general um is is out of balance in the masculine and toxic man masculine excuse me masculinity equals things like control you know when masculine energies are things like forward motion and doing and and man, you know manifesting things and putting plans on paper and things those are all healthy masculinity you know because that's what you need to do to get something out there once you work in the feminine in order to figure out well what do i need to get out there what's the most sustainable and and um kindest and and best for everybody way to do it and then you have to actually do it you know if you go into the creative field to grab um uh, some masterpiece of a song you have to play it you have to record it you have to market it you those are all masculine energies so you, they both have to happen but those are healthy masculine energies those energies are carrying out what you know happened in the feminine so toxic masculinity is is control 
um, power, trying to overpower, trying to compete instead of cooperate. That's toxic masculinity. And that is very, very apparent in our culture right now. And if people buy into it, it's going to show up in their own lives as well. And they may think that they'll have it all and win at life if they have all the power, all the money, all the, um, you know, uh, go forward at any, at any cost over anybody, but they're just going to find themselves on the top of the hill by themselves looking around at the end, you know? Yeah. yeah. I'm sure you've known um, being into all the cultural issues and being a holistic coach that the word toxic masculinity gets a lot of pushback from men. Um, you know, and because I feel they think too. that it's it's attacking men. Be, and, and it's really, you know what it is, it's those labels you mentioned before. Why do we have to have the labels? In this case, the reason we have to have them is because we have to define them. I have a, um, a male friend that I work with on, on different um, projects and things um, because he's really about the same stuff I am too. And so he works this, he's an artist, but he works this, this job, just sort of a, you know, regular day job. And he went in one day and he asked, just as an experiment, asked some of the guys there, what do you think masculine, you know, masculine energy is, you know, just what do you, what do you believe that that is? What do you know that that is? And of course he heard all kinds of things like, well, it means, you know, being a man and doing all these manly things. And, and, and they gave him all the, you know, I don't even know how to, to give you the the um, things he said, you know, I don't want to say like hunting and fishing or whatever, but like just, you know, manly things. And he realized that all the guys he asked, nobody knew what a masculine energy was, which is another reason why I'm writing this book. I've written my last book too, to define holding space so people understood what it was and we could start to change the perception of of holding space and a feminine energy being a positive thing and something that takes a lot of energy and things that we need to honor ourselves for. Well, I'm writing this next one to explain what these energies are, how we need to embrace them and understand them in order to heal them. So yeah, men are balking at toxic masculinity because they're taking it as a personal assault only because it hasn't become mainstream for people to understand what mas masculine energies are. It doesn't mean males. That now that's excellent. Uh, people getting offended at that word because they haven't, re they don't really have a working definition on what masculinity really even is. So, yeah. Well, masculinity is a different thing than the divine masculine energy too. So ah, yeah. So let, let, let's parse those too. things. What's what's masculinity and There's divine layers. masculinity? You <laughs> well, created more of a question line for me. Look at that. <laughs> masculinity is is going to be something that a male will want to embody, right? You know, females aren't going to want to embody masculinity, but females are going to have to and, you know, need to and hopefully want to embody the divine masculine. Well, what's the difference between me being masculine and me embracing my divine masculinity? Oh, you are asking me to give so much of my new book away. Oh, um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but this is good because this is this is really outlining how it's needed and and helps me know like gosh people need and and like I said part of the reason for this book is to really lay out these definitions um, so people can start to have a working definition and understand where all these layers happen. Um, but it has to do with I'll just say for now it has to do with whether you're physiologically um, male or female and and I do want to just put out there I do cover. Um, other genders as well, you know, transgendered and, and oh, we're going to LGBT in a minute, <laughs> but uh, we're, we're going to get there. As well. <laughs> um, <laughs> because you can't, you can't talk about masculine energies and feminine energies, males and females, uh, masculine and femininity without inviting that into, you know, the whole mix because it, it's not complete if you don't. So oh, yeah, I was definitely headed there. I just wanted to, no, I don't mean you're not complete if you don't. I just mean in, in, that's another part where our society's got it wrong. You know, every, every part of society where we've shoved away somebody, some group, something, that's actually where we need to go looking. Mm. All right. So but I, I do, I do definitely want to talk about the, um, the gay, bisexual, lesbian, transgender thing. But I, I, before I get, get there, I want to ask about, do you think there is a toxic femininity and why don't we ever hear that talked about? There is. I think the reason we don't hear it talked about is because it's not, our culture is out of balance in the divine masculine right now. 
And like I said, the way it's out of balance is in power, is in competition over cooperation, um, you know, technology over any kind of um, feminine energy of, of creativity or holding space or relationships or sustainability. And so that's why you're not going to hear it right now is because um, it, it, it's not prevalent. It's not, you know, a, a, a woman here and there, um, or even a man, I guess, could um, be displaying toxic feminism, femininity or feminine energies, but it, it's just not as rampant and it's not what needs to be healed in order to bring us back to balance right now. Well, I'll ask you personally, do you, do you even, do you believe about, do you believe anything about uh, toxic femininity and what, what is that? What do you think when, that is? When anything gets out of balance, I mean, anything, think of the yin yang, you know, yeah. it's a, it's a balance. So when anything gets out of balance, it becomes to toxic. You know, there's the, the healthy qualities of certain things. It, it's like, chocolate okay let's just use chocolate if you eat a little bit of chocolate that's great you know if you like chocolate you're enjoying it you know it feels good it makes you happy it's like oh i had this great chocolate cake or whatever but if you eat chocolate cake every day you're gonna get sick it's toxic <laughs> chocolate at that point your, cho your chocolate is no longer healthy and and serving a pleasurable purpose in your life it's now become toxic yeah well all right so what about this gay, lesbian, transsexual, bisexual thing. Uh, you know, so I, I, you brought that up. So what, what is it about that? Do, do gay men have a higher feminine energy than, and then masculine men? What about bisexual men? Let's talk about it. I think that it's nature's way of balancing the two energies. In, in what, in, in, inside of a gay person, a bisexual person, transgender? Like, what, what do you mean balance? Like I said before, anyone or any group who's been repressed mm -hmm. or suppressed or pushed down or, you know, um, told that they are not um, worthy or they there's something wrong with them. Or that's where we need to go looking. I'm just going to say that all the all the places, all the people, all the groups that have been shoved down, pushed down, pushed aside, rejected, ostracized. Those are the people with the keys to the kingdom as far as what we need to look at, what we need to heal. Um, it doesn't mean we all have to become gay. It just means that um, those who are, are holding a truth or holding a example or holding a key to help balance the scales a bit. So... So do you, do you know of any particular thing that a gay person or anyone part of that community could, could what, what, what keys are they holding? What tips do they have that other men can use or other people can use, if you know? They've balanced their, their inner divine masculine and, and divine feminine. And like I said, it doesn't mean that to balance your divine masculine and divine feminine that you'll be gay or you'll be a lesbian. It doesn't mean that. Mm -hmm. um, because there are preferences in us the same as we have preferences for uh, one person likes soccer, the other person likes football, you know, <laughs> it's, yeah. it, it's, and, and of course we're going to have different um, chemicals in us and different um, hormones and different things that are going to, to make us go towards one side or the other. But the point is that those people aren't wrong. It's just our world that made them wrong, you know, but so it's it's not a matter of we all have to be gay and lesbian in order to understand how to balance that. It's, that's not the point. It's just that I believe that when things are out of balance, when there's a problem anywhere, there are solutions, there are answers, or there are lighthouses um, placed in and amongst society. And when we take those lighthouses and we banish them, ostracize them, attack them, abuse them, um, we're just hurting ourselves because the lighthouse had something to show us or tell us. It doesn't necessarily mean we have to be like them or act like them or adopt the exact same lifestyle as them. It just means that if we don't shove them away or, you know, if you're out in the, in the sea, metaphorically, okay, you're out in the sea and you don't know where you're going, you're trying to find land and there's a lighthouse, right? And so you need that lighthouse in order to make it to land and, and be alive and complete your journey. And somebody comes over you know, right before you're about to see the light from that lighthouse and, and somebody on land takes, you know, a bulldozer and, and destroys the lighthouse. 
Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah definitely. You, you know, you don't want to destroy the, like, that's the one guiding you to shore, you know? Um, and that doesn't mean that they're guiding us, whatever. It just means I feel like when things are out of balance and like we talked earlier, sometimes what you need is to just have the understanding of what do we need to do to get forward. Mm -hmm. There are these lighthouses placed around humanity that have those insights that, and it's not so much that they need to tell us or teach us or, or have, you know, make a speech or whatever. It's, it's just even in our allowing of those people to exist and be there and, and deem them just as worthy as the rest of us. That might be all someone needs for that to be their lighthouse is to just have an acceptance of everything that, it, you know, shows up in, in the world that's not harming themselves or somebody else and having that be an okay part of existence because then you're accepting that part of yourself that you're not deeming as unworthy or not okay. And, and we can't be okay with ourselves if we're taking some part of ourselves and saying that that's not worthy or that's not okay. And that's when people suffer. So what happens is people have that going on in the inside and then they'll take it to the outside and, and blame other people or other things. And a lot of times it's, it's something in themselves that they can't be okay with in themselves. That doesn't mean that they're gay and they're trying to shove that away. It just means there's something unacceptable to them, some darkness and whatever, you know, I don't know. But yeah, uh, well, I, I always say like when you judge somebody else, especially when you get into that compulsive, harsh judgment, you're also judging yourself. Or most likely you're projecting, which is another whole thing. Yep. But projecting um, as well. Yep. Yeah. It's not, it has nothing to do with that thing on the outside. It has to do with something you can't, you're having a hard time healing or um, reconciling within yourself. And so when that gets, you know, that's why people drink or, or eat too much or gamble or, you know, have unhealthy sex and things like that, because they don't look at what's bothering me here. How can I sit with it and allow space for those, that uncomfortableness and those, those scary feelings? How do I just, make it go away mm. so, so, so in society how did we make that go away we started suppressing groups of people yeah right? make it go away get rid of them exclude them from participation in regular normal society get out of here you're mutants yeah but then what does that do for for the people that that did that then they're they're ostracizing those parts of themselves and and it's not making them like i said they're just gonna be sitting on the hill by themselves at some point after they've ostracized and and suppressed and pushed down everything else around them that they deemed unacceptable and they're going to be sitting on the hill by themselves going um okay still not happy how come yeah exactly because you know because the popular thing is not just gay people that people shun i mean people shun parts of themselves that yeah. maybe it's not a gay thing but oh i shouldn't have had sex with that person last night or i shouldn't be sure and then whatever, you look at we somebody else and about. you think well they shouldn't do this yeah. and and the reason that you'd have any reason to have that judgment against them is you're you're right probably something in yourself that you're judging that doesn't necessarily have to be an exact parallel to i did you know a gay act it has nothing to do with that it's, it's just something it just represents something just like the lighthouse. It just represents something. It doesn't mean, you know, we all have to be gay. It just means it's a lighthouse. It's, it's something that it represents. And if we say it's not okay and push it down, shove it down, try and get rid of it, we're taking the whatever, whatever equal thing in ourselves that isn't that exact thing, but something and saying it's not okay. We're pushing it down, shoving it down. So, you know. so it, another question, of course. So, it, in your opinion, does the amount of embracing of masculine and feminine energy? So, you, do you think, do you think that's linked or not linked to being gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender? Personally, I don't know that that has anything to do with it. I just think it's, and this is my personal opinion. I just think it's nature. I think it's by design. You know why any of us are whatever we are you know why one flower is a daisy and one flower is a rose why a daisy uh, why why nemo i mean i know he's not real but why nemo had a um a small fin and uh, you know not two two perfectly uh shaped same sized fins you know it's just nature i think and so that doesn't mean nemo's wrong it doesn't mean the people who are are straight are wrong it doesn't mean people who are gay are wrong it's just it just is just nature, just like, you know, just like I would say, I, I say this all the time, like, you know, a lot of men have some anxiety around, you know, their penis size. I'm like, it's a natural thing. You really can't control that. No, it just is. And, the, you and like you said, is. Is, is the acceptance, does that help? 
absolutely. But you know, you said does it acceptance in the in the gay community of their masculine and feminine sides? No, gosh, how many of them are still in the closet? How many of them are absolutely um, bashing themselves for being gay? How many people tried to pray away the gay? You know, it's it's like you said, like the penis size. You know, is there anything they can do about it? No. So should they worry about it? Uh, you know, obsess about it? To degrade themselves about it like that's just going to hold them back from living a full life you know thank god though in their case that society doesn't decide that they're going to make a, a whole cultural um you know idea that if you have a small penis you're you should not hang around with the rest of us yeah you, know? right. you can't have children we're going to take away your house because they do this to gay people you can't adopt yeah. we're going to take away your house we're going to yeah if you have yeah. a small penis imagine yeah. imagine have that happen if you had a small penis you can't own a house you can't get hired for a job you can't exactly yeah so you know when you said you know do do gay and lesbian people do they have that are they accepting that in themselves a lot of them aren't and they're suffering but the world is suffering too for for bullying them you know it's like we're, we're all suffering for doing that. So what we really need to do is like you said from the beginning, do the work from the inside out because that's the only way is to to not shove away, shut down, um, disrespect ourselves. The guy with the small penis, disrespecting that. What? Who cares? There's going to be some woman who is going to love that man for himself and who is going to give two craps about what size his penis is. Yeah, absolutely. But you know, within the male culture, there's a lot of stigma around that and I'm like, well, why would it? That's well, I feel like why are men, you know, sitting around showing each other anyway? I don't know. Well, we don't it's not even about showing. <laughs> it's, it's more of a status symbol. It's more of like bigger is better. It's not that they flash each other. It's more like a bigger is better. You got a small weenie, you must be less than a man. Bigger is better. You know, so. Well, I see, I get, as a woman, I don't even get like why it comes up. Like women don't talk about that. They're not like, you know, constantly I don't know, comparing their stuff with each other. And, and, you well, know, I, I tell you what that is. It's not about, well, there's two things. First, there's two things first. One, I don't think it's about the penis that men go through it about. I don't think men walk around showing every man their penis. And men, <laughs> well, that's I good. Think Glad that to know that. More <laughs> with the penis. I mean, some men do show each other, but whatever. I don't think it's about, I don't think it's, it's about the topic. penis. <laughs> I, I think it's about male ego. I think it's about the idea that bigger is better um, because men do the same thing with their bodies. I'm more muscular than you. It's well, and that's the thing. That's back to your, you know, we were talking about the toxic masculinity. Society has taught men that. Society mm -hmm. has taught men to, a toxic ma masculinity is letting the ego rule. Yeah. I'm taller well, than you. I'm more muscular than you. Yeah. And I think that naturally extends to a penis because it's part of our bodies. Because but but tall, nature I'm gave muscular. you that. Like, what? That, that's just what you got. Like, that doesn't yeah. define you as a person. That doesn't define, y you know, your insides, your worth, your um, ability to, to manifest anything, happiness. Um, well, I, I agree with you. But, but I, I think that that's the one thing that it's when people, when men obsess over each other's penises, I don't think it's about penis. I think it's about deeper. No, it's things, that toxic bigger, masculinity, like you said. Yeah, it's of about the masculinity. Culture. It's, it's the ego um, becoming more important, the physical becoming more important than the spiritual. The, and I don't mean spiritual in a religious aspect. I just mean the, and whatever's bigger than the person that they want to think of, because yeah. we're obviously not alone here. You know, I, there's something obviously. bigger than us. Whatever, whatever yeah. someone wants to think it is, it doesn't matter to me. Yeah. But um, the, 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 you know, the second thing I will say, which you with, I guess in turn, that was a question why I meant of the, the second thing I would say is that no, women don't talk about the same parts of their body, but women do walk around with their own insecurities about weight, about looks and stuff like that. So I just Again, think where that does that come are, from the culture? Yeah, that's, I mean, it's all coming from the culture. I agree with you. femininity you were talking about where, you know, you have to look like this and, and you know, be um, superwoman. You know, uh, people who are, are women or moms or daughters, you know, whatever. Like, you have to do everything. You have to, and then my first, in my uh, Holding Space book covers some of that. How, you know, you, you can't do everything and be expected to show up as perfect all the time. And so it's a different thing. You know, women are, are trying to judge themselves against that, whereas guys are trying to judge themselves against their, their penis size. So you're right. It's, it's two different sides. But again, if, if we can balance those sides in ourselves while working on hopefully what we can help with this conversation and, and the book and everybody else that's talking about this, because there are other people working on this, 
define and and get people to understand and change this perspective of what divine masculine and divine mm -hmm. feminine energies yeah. are yeah. that we all have them and get people to do that inner work to balance them within themselves there will be less of that i, I definitely <laughs> agree and and whether it's beauty or size or anything like that all of this crap is coming from the superficial culture which at the end of the day, like I said, you're on the hill by yourself looking around. What did it have to do with anything? Nothing. No. You know, all the studies where people talk to people on their deathbed and say, what do you wish you would have, you know, done differently? Nobody's saying, I really wish I had a bigger penis or, you know, I really wish I would have taken care of more people instead of myself, uh, you know, and just, and, you know, ran myself dry or I wish, you know, I would have made more money or whatever. No one's saying that. They're saying the, the core inside things. That, that don't have anything to do with any of that stuff. Yeah, like I wish I didn't care what be people thought as much. I wish I would have- I wish I would have just been myself. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Not judged myself, not judged other people, whatever it is, just, you know, I wish yeah, I would have just shown yeah, up it, as myself. Yeah, it's never, yeah, you're right. It's never, wow, I, I, I'm an 89 on my deathbed. Damn, I wish I had a bigger penis. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, 89 on my deathbed. Damn, I wish I would have neglected myself more. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody says that. Nobody's saying that. Because, and, and, and the key here is let's not wait till we get on our deathbed to realize that. Let's live our lives now. Because once you get to your deathbed, that, you know, you, you don't have the time to decide. All things to, don't matter. All that superficial, physical look, size, all that stuff doesn't even matter. Yeah. So why wait? Why wait to yeah, why get to wait? that point where, you know, let's, let's, understand that now and choose to live our lives rather than you know keeping ourselves closeted or covered or suppressed or shamed or you know judging or, or whatever like live it now mm, excellent excellent stuff all right so how how would someone get in touch with you maybe hire you maybe read some of your books or anything like that <laughs> Sure. Um, my sort of all-encompassing website is itsasyoulikeit.com. I will spell that. It's I-T-S-A-S-Y-O-U-L-I-K-E-I-T.com. Itsasyoulikeit.com. And that has all my books. Um, I do speak at different places. So if anyone wants to hire me as a speaker for anything, I do the coaching. I have, um, if people are interested in relationship, how to build a healthy relationship, and this is a relationship with yourself, your spouse, your you know, I'm, I'm focusing more on intimate relationships here, but the, the information really applies to everything. I've made it absolutely affordable because I didn't want to price anybody out of healing in that way because it's so important to me. So I have a $25 six video series of how to create healthy partnerships on my website as well. All my books are on there. Every, everything's on there. Mm, excellent. It's as you like it. Dot com. Yep. It's as you like it.com, which will be, of course, on the show page, on the main page of my website, coreconfidencelife.com. Um, so if you're listening to this interview, that means it's already up, which means the link is already there. <laughs> so um, so what, what, is some, what is some advice that you can give someone um, in this moment? Uh, if they listen to this program, they're sitting, they're sitting home on their bum in their underwear and they want to get more connected with their self, what would you, what was the thing they can do right now? What's screaming in my head right now is be authentic, be yourself. And you're going to get, I'm not going to tell you that it's going to be easy. And I'm not going to tell you, you're not going to get pushback from the people around you, but do it anyway. Be your whole self because we need you to be. Definitely. Definitely. Well, thank you. This has been a great conversation. And it has. This has been absolutely amazing. Thank you so much. Yeah, this, this, was, this, was, this was excellent. And I appreciate your time for coming on the program, you divine feminine creature, you. <laughs> thank you, you divine masculine embodied, but getting <laughs> towards that balance of divine masculine and feminine uh, equally balanced creature you. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. As long as I don't have to wear anything pink. That makes me you less than a man. Pink preference. is a you feminine color. Yeah. But you know what? If you want to, you can. But you know what's funny? I like the color purple. And sometimes, oh, purple. A lot of women like purple. Men don't like, you know, you, you know you, when you do research for the colors you should have on your website. You know, they always say that <laughs> men, men love blue. Purple is more of a woman thing. But I look good in purple. 
Then you wear it. That's I do. Well, purple is one of my, everyone who knows me knows I, I'm always in purple. Good. Then you need to keep doing that because yeah. people would be sad if you stopped wearing purple. Yeah, that's one of my main colors. Thank, thank you for your time. A great, great show. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. It won't be the last time we'll be talking about this topic. All right. How to balance your masculine energy and the nature of being a man. Right. We won't be uh, a stranger to this topic, folks. Thanks for listening to the program. If you want to be a guest on the program to share your story of overcoming low self-esteem, lack of confidence, and you want to share your relationship story, your uh you know, your, your sex story, your self-image story, you know, hit us up, Dennis at coreconfidencelife.com or visit the website coreconfidencelife.com. Um, I am Dennis R. Sumlin broadcasting to you here from New York City. And don't forget to visit our website for all the services that Core Confidence Life has to offer. That's right. Core Confidence Life, helping you master your inner game and Take the field.